Hi everybody, another glorious Friday and the weekend awaits. Brilliant. Right, thanks for joining me. And we're trying to trialing a different hat this week. I thought my old camera was struggling last week with the exposure popping in and out. So we'll give this a shot. I think in all fairness the old camera's probably had its day. And then the old girl have been lots of places together, done lots of things, but I think she's coming to the end of her uh, useful life. There you go. If any equipment manufacturers out there want to uh, send me any freebie, I, I can be bribed. <laughs> I think I've just blown that. Right, now we're sharing the table this week with my wife's bedding plants. The old violas are coming uh, to the end now. So if I dash off, it's because I've probably got a bee up my nose or something. I don't care if you have got a block to do. That's where they go in. <laughs> Yes, you know how it is, the old Parkinson's War studio being invaded once again. Right, now, at the end of this there will be another offering for the uh, the film club. And it features Adish Cutler. Now, Adish, as you might know, can have some adult themes. Uh, but I think this one's safe. I think it slips under the wire. Um, and so that, that one should be okay. be interesting, actually, because... Uh, Jim Nichols and Andrew Merriman we, and myself, we've been discussing this move by um, YouTube, I nearly said you part, by YouTube to uh, monetize or to put adverts on everybody's videos, irrespective of whether they monetize it or not. I don't, so I don't expect to get adverts, but they're going to do it anyway. Now, if I put a copyright piece of music in this somewhere, you would expect adverts because then the people that own the copyright have the right to monetize it. So, okay, I understand that. But without it, it'd be interesting to see. And Adj, Adj must be doing a freebie because there's no copyright on uh, Adj, I've checked. So, there shouldn't be too many adverts on this one. If there are, I apologize to you, but by now you've probably got used to it, to be honest. Getting worse, yes. Uh, I think if there were an alternative to YouTube, I think quite a few people would change, provided they uh, had a less advertising forum. No, that's not the word. Less advertising business model. That'll do. Right, anyway. Now, the matters are rising then. Go into matters are rising. And I'm covering uh, two sections. The last vlog and the last film. So, uh, this is my pick of the comments. Both Michael from Poland and Steve Jessick commented, they don't make music like that anymore. That's in reference to last week's... Uh, the last vlog's film, which was a fast drive from uh, South Wales. They don't make music like that anymore, which is showing your age, gentlemen. Simon the Hairy Golfer commented, you drive like my wife. <laughs> dangerous, Simon, dangerous. Nicholas Bent commented, were you trying to find Mrs. Parker's walk driving out of speed, or was it her behind the wheel? Nicholas, I'm too much of a gentleman to say. <laughs> now, we have a comment from uh, our mascot, Sue Mac MacArthur. Who's How many channels do you know have got a mascot? That's brilliant, isn't it? He said, well, Ron, my paw couldn't quite reach the brake pedal, but it came in handy covering my eyes once or twice. <laughs> now, James, her owner, you would think was ecstatic, because according to James, he's training her to put the kettle on for his, uh, for his cup of coffee. But no, 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 <laughs> he says... The trouble is, she tends to overfill it a bit. <laughs> There's a bit of a learning curve, I reckon. <laughs> James, you're never happy. Oh well. Uh, north by Northwest. Ian, you'll love this one. Hi, Ron. Fashionably late for Christmas. What? You might remember at Christmas, uh, I put on a film about the Severn Valley Railway Museum, the engine shed. Well, Ian's just caught up to that. He's fashionably late for Christmas. <laughs> oh dear. He said, you do exactly what I do when I go to a train museum. Photos from all sorts of bizarre angles. Do the same with aircraft too. And old cars and... I think I need a new hobby. <laughs> yes, I think, I think we're all going to agree with that one, Ian. Oh dear. Now when we moved into uh, Wick War film then, 
Simon the Hairy Golfer uh, was going on about portals and it's some something that takes you somewhere else. I guess it does. So I replied to him, I thought, that's a bit deep for you, Simon. He replied, my depth has not been measured. My width, yes, and it's too much. <laughs> Join you on that one. Uh, well, uh, Shortly afterwards, Peter Smith came on and said, what was no longer on your walk was almost as fascinating as what was there. It just goes to show the impermanence of everything, including ourselves. I thought, what was that? And uh, our hairy golfer, Simon, I, steady on chaps. I'm going to have to rename this channel Parkinson's Walks Meditations or something, we're not careful. <laughs> Train driver Rob. Good old Rob. Now then, I've come up with some facts on the tunnel. The Wickwar Tunnel is 1,401 yards long, has seven air shafts, gets very wet and has very little lining as it's literally blasted out of solid rock. It must have been a nightmare to construct. Yeah, imagine that. But most respect for those guys. All done with just primitive tools really and a bit of blasting powder and I think a few of them paid the ultimate price. Mr. Owl, the DCM, DSM, DSM, distinguishing. Hmm. He says, I've passed that brewery on the signal box many times. I've always been interested in that whole area. I can feel my trip to visit it being brought forward having seen your film. Good. Uh, the whole idea of Parkinson's Walks when we started out was that people with Parkinson's like myself would see it and think, well, yeah, I can get out there and do some walking, try to encourage you to get out there and walk. Since then, it's kind of grown a bit and it's uh, diversified and goodness knows what. But the basic principle is still there. And if I can encourage people to get out and walk about, brilliant. Now, Michael from Poland says, It seems strange to leave the signal box when everything else at Wick War Station has been removed. I wonder who owns it now. Ah, and as you might expect, Andrew has stepped in, Andrew Merriman, and he can say, I can see why you wondered what my opinion would be about the signal box. And then he goes on to say, the signal box at Wick Hall was just beyond the end of the platform, opposite the goods shed. And then he gives us some legal information about the positioning of uh, signal boxes. By law, it had to be no more than 350 yards from the signal box to the furthest point in each direction and there's a whole load of information on there you know you know Andrew by now he goes into the detail of what uh, what everything's all about and it's fascinating reading so when we finish this vlog I encourage you to go back to the last uh, film cut through that get to the comments and read what Andrew's got to say and others I have to say Philip Pankhurst said the concrete lamppost at Wick War it was very much like the Southern Railway product from their factory at Exmouth. Uh, what would a Southern Railway's lamppost be doing on a GWR station? Interesting stuff. Andrew Merriman has a view. He said the concrete post was a yard lamp adjacent to the goods shed. And then he goes on and explains more again about that and about the, um, the operation of the lamp. And it's absolutely brilliant stuff once again. So read all those comments down through there. Very good. Jim Nichols said, some more good detective work there, Inspector Ron. <laughs> yes, good old uh, Jim. Gary Dwyer says, it's interesting video. It's strange how the old railway infrastructure disappears, but the old pubs seem to survive. Yeah, well, one's making money and one's losing it, I guess, Gary. And he also says, just letting you know, here in Victoria, Australia, we've just gone into a seven-day lockdown again. Oh, well, it's just the times we live in. Oh, Gary, that's, uh, that's not good news, is it? We're not out of the woods yet. And we're all getting a little bit blase, I think, because we've had our uh, jabs, those of us that have had our jabs, that is. Um, it ain't finished yet. Right, now... That's my uh, pick of the comments from the last uh, two weeks. Now, next week we're going to the Cotswolds. We're leaving railways behind just for uh, one session, and we're going to the Cotswolds. And uh, we're going to film around North Leach. Uh, I'm doing this one for Sharon Idle. Sharon uh, requested or asked if I had any film on North Leach, going back quite a while. Fortunately, I have, and I've just managed to 
squeeze it in. So we're going to have a walk around uh, Northledge. Uh, Cotswold walks do tend to be popular. Quite a few people like them, but of course people with just a railway interest don't. So if it's not your bag, we'll catch you in a week or so's time on the next one. But for those of us interested in the Cotswolds and walking around around there, we're all going to meet up next Friday and off we're going to go. Now, we'll run Ange next and get that out of the way. And then we'll meet you at uh, North Leach. No doubt Gary Dwyer will be wearing his virtual Wellington as always. <laughs> so, complete with virtual Wellingtons or not, I'll see you in North Leach next Friday. Don't be late. Now I farmed in Kongsbury when I were a boy A cordon of rose, she were my pride and joy Now Rosie was pretty and just seventeen When I showed her the works of me threshing machine Threshing machine, threshing machine she told me that she were a much traveled girl, seen faces, been places all over the world. But there was one sight that her eyes never seen a vertical piston drive threshing machine. Threshing machine, threshing machine, a vertical piston drive threshing machine. We went to the barn and I took her inside And said if you're good I might give ye a ride It stood there all sparkling and shiny and clean She said that's what I call a threshing machine Threshing machine, threshing machine That's what I call a threshing machine She asked me to demonstrate how the thing worked so I let out the clutch, the machine went berserk. You couldn't see naught for the smoke and the steam when I started revving me threshing machine. Threshing machine, threshing machine. When I started revving my threshing machine. When I said Rose could drive it for better or worse The whole dang contraption went into reverse The camshaft seized up, well you know what I mean And that was the end of me threshing machine Threshing machine, threshing machine And that was the end of my threshing machine